be me. Sergeant Yuri of the Valhallen 545th Armored. Let me tell you that transit on an Arc Mechanicus is one of the worst ways to travel if you're not augmented. The entire place smells like incense and oil. Several rooms here seem to be under the impression anyone entering had their lungs replaced or doesn't mind a bit of rad poisoning. The temperature is always either freezing cold or boiling hot with no middle ground. We stayed mostly in one of the sub-zero rooms because it reminded us of home. No beds. The gravity is set to Mars. There are exposed Tesla coils and giant grinding gears everywhere. All the signs are in binary. Hardly anyone speaks low gothic. No one wants to talk to you. It takes a 10 minute long prayer to open any doors. Unless of course you can speak binary. And that's not even getting to the actual warp transit. Hard to tell if all the odd noises you hear are supposed to happen or not. One upside though was the Skaterii. Those guys are practically guardsmen, with a few more metal bits. Even if a few are on the more religious side, but no more than a few regiments. Still, they know how to party. The Ark Mechanicus eventually drops us off on a nearby forge world while they refuel and repair. Though if this was just one of their ships, I can only imagine what their planets are like. Take a space elevator down from the iron ring where the Ark Mechanicus is dry docked we are greeted by a sight straight out of an Elder Exodite's worst nightmare. Lava pits, smog, smokestacks, skyscrapers, and cogboys everywhere. While wandering around looking for a place that sells gas masks you don't need to permanently attach to your face, or some food not in paste form, we suddenly hear a high pitched static screaming noise. Many tech priests fall on the ground twitching. WTF is happening tech heresy the tech priests with few augments seem mostly fine. So whatever this was, was clearly targeting the most heavily augmented. Look up and see several dark ships in the smog filled sky. Hellrakes and Archaeopters flying overhead. Dark Mechanicum and Eshichau Afteran of the Life and Thegud and Archaeopter Transvector with stretched skin wings hovers overhead. Ropes come out and several very fleshy Skaterii vanguards slide down. Affix bayonets charge be me. Archmargos Explorator Prime just dropped off a group of Valhallans I rescued from a space Hulk I destroyed. Currently enjoying a nice warm oil bath as my ship is repaired. Their leader, Yuri was actually quite attractive. Were I a few centuries younger I might have tried flirting with him. Fully submerge myself in the oil. Enjoy a nice moment of peace and quiet. Dot. As soon as I surface here warning klaxons. Plasemi yes for an essek and anger wrap a towel around myself and rush to the bridge. Status report tech a giant dark mechanicum fleet has appeared out of nowhere and taken out most of the forge world's defenses. No signs of arc mechanicuses or space hulks yet. We were mostly fine since our ship was tuned to a different frequency. Every signal we receive from the forge world just sounds like screaming. Back the ship out of the dock, repairs were mostly done, and start opening fire on the dark mechanicum fleet. Deploy Skaterii and drop keeps to the planet's surface to help survivors. Be me, Sergeant Yuri. Enter close combat with the mutated Skaterii. Their bodies are surprisingly durable, however as the old saying goes, if it bleeds it can be killed. Manage to wipe out the squad only to hear a loud re-earing above us. Several Sakarian rust stalkers land, blades vibrating and soaked in blood and oil. Begin tactical withdrawal firing our LAS guns behind us. Enter a nearby forge temple. It's a lemon rust factory. We can work with this. The rust stalkers follow us. And we jump onto the conveyor belts. Hoping to hide among the machinery. Just then the skylight is smashed and several Taraxii swoop in with the same stretched stitched together skin wings as the Archaeopters. Fuck my life Slanesh still be Sergeant Yuri. Manage to evade the Chaos Rust Stalkers and Taraxii. Taking pot shots at their skin wings from the machinery. Follow the assembly line all the way down to the end. Find several fresh off the line and painted lemon russes. This is where the fun budget Vox order my men into the tanks. The insides don't even have cushions for the seats yet. Once everyone is inside a rided out servitor bursts into the manufactorum and roars. 
thing is as big as a dreadnought and has I shit you not a knight's chain sword sewn to one of its arms. Perfect pick fire. I shout. No ammo sir. Reports my loader. Phone. That would be too easy wouldn't it? Welp only one thing left to do now. Pull out bottle of vodka and quickly chug the whole thing. Smash the bottom and point the broken end towards the tech abomination. Chararaj. Be me. Philinid mercenary captain Scarlet. This time around an inquisitor hired us to assassinate a tech priest who recently purchased an eye from the leagues of Otten. Exits the warp. The system is being invaded by the dark mechanicum. Fuck my life Vox this is gonna be harder than we thought. Can't back out until we confirm the target is dead though. Pissing off the inquisition is not how I want to go out. See an arc mechanics. Attempt to hail them in the hopes of getting safe passage to the planet's surface to perform our job. Be Sergeant Yuri. Two tanks on my flanks go in and pin the servitor in place while mine goes right up the middle. Our treads hitting it right in its oversized kneecaps. It howls in pain then swipes at me with its oversized night chain sword. I duck into my lemon rus, then pop my head out and slice at its exposed wires with my bottle. It swipes again, and I duck then pop my head out and dig my bottle into its armpit. It howls again and swipes only to hit the tank on my left's vanquisher cannon as it tries to bring its blade back. I stab the bottle right into where its heart should be but the bastard still refuses to just fucking die already. Be me. Arch Margo's Explorator Prime. Be in the process of single handedly holding off a dark mechanicum fleet in the void. Several fighters slip past because I'm just one ship. Receiving communication data packet on screen tech some adorable cat girls are requesting access to the planet. Send out a few fighters to escort them then get back to the wider battle. Decide now is also a good time to try and send out a distress signal to let the wider Imperium know just what in the omniscient name is going on here. Where is my astropath? Be me Lord Morvi of the 13th Company of Night Lords. Enter the system from the warp. Order the ship crew to have us fly at minimum power. We recently got word from some tortured victims that a dark mechanicus vessel was in this area. I want the loot. That terminator plate and genocide wasn't enough for me. Perhaps those imperials that took the ultramarines cataphracti is also in the system ready men to action. Brothers and went to sleep after our arc of omen incident. Bringing our headless disco lord Carlin Ruck. Kept alive using warp sorcery and medical care. My men equip the black legion terminator armor. We modified it to suit us. Now there's some proper night lords heraldry on it. Macab doesn't get in the armor. My 10 regular space marines get in the terminator armor. 15 terminators if we include myself. One of the raptors takes the role of champion. His name's Heartseeker. More of a title than a name but I'm not going to argue with the raptors. Still only have 3 warp talents. They'll be closely monitored by the raptors. Zool leading the 5 possessed marines and 2 obliterators as usual. Carl and Ruck joining him for the ride. I grab my chain glaive and combi belter. It's only 2 claws but 15 terminators in first claw and macabre as well as a full demonic second claw. Ready the dread claws surfs. We take what we desire from this world in the dark mechanicus. Be Ignis. Lord Morvi wasn't satisfied with the loot from our last mission and once more. Mentioned something about Imperials fighting Dark Mechanicum. Don't really pay attention or care as long as it's something I can burn. My loadout is my usual power sword, Terminator armor, and of course my heavy flamer Zara. Load up into a dread claw with Morvi and a few other marines. Pet Zara as we launch. No idea if we're headed for the actual plant or one of the vessels, but don't really care. Be Arch Margo's Explorator Prime. Finally find Astropath. She was in the shower. Tell her to get her lazy ass to her, her chamber and send out a distress signal. Also put on my robes. Once I return to the bridge one of my officers reports picking up a space marine battle marge on sensors. That was first warp too much interference with the dark mechanicum to clearly make out the ship. Decide to hail them and see if they can assist. Deja vu new sphere be Lord Morvi. The dread claws are ready. Destination set for the dark mechanicus vessel. Too few numbers for a ground assault. Plus not our style. 
Also because the raptors aren't at full strength same with warp talents. My right hand man is petting his flamer. I smile under my helmet as I get a vox from the bridge of the morning of night. Mechanicus ship wanting to send a vox to the ship. Tell them to accept it and to relay the following. Be Captain Lasker of the morning of night. Open up the Mechanicus vox link and say. This is Captain Catherine serving under the morning night space marines chapter. We detected a dark Mechanicus vessel in this area and have deplored our forces to the ship. We'll take care of it. You focus on the ground assault. Hope by the night haunter that the lie works and that my fake name is enough to please the Mechanicus. Last thing I want is to engage in a void battle with an Arc Mechanicus Lord Morvi would be great saddened by the death of Contemptor's son. Be me. Arch Margos Explorator Prime. Receive response back. Image is grainy though. Can just barely make out. Are those chains and hooks? Must be a chapter thing. This is Captain Catherine serving under the morning night space marines chapter. We detected a dark Mechanicus vessel in this area and have deplored our forces to the ship. We'll take care of it. You focus on the ground assault about to search the data net for morning nights when suddenly a dark Mechanicum Kamikaze ship rams us. Give the ship cords for what we've determined to be the Dark Mechanicum flagship and wish them luck cutting the connection. Go back to trying to coordinate a decent defense strategy. Those for Linids should be done with my fighters soon so I can call them back. Be Captain Lasker going under the name Catherine to the Imperials. They've given us the coordinates for the main Dark Mechanicus flagship vessel that's bound to have exactly what Lord Morvi desires most. Relaying the coordinates to the Astartes now. Good luck Arch Margos cut the Vox link afterwards. Open up private Vox channel with Morvi hope he praises me. I love it when he praises me. Makes me all giddy inside. The Mechanicus don't suspect a thing my lord. Relaying coordinates to first claw. Second claw and third claw dread claws now be Lord Morvi. Receive Vox message from Lasker. They've bought it. Receive coordinates. Main vessel is our destination. Bound to be a lot of ammo and guns on board. Good job Lasker. Make sure they continue to not suspect a thing. We don't want to lose our way out of the system thought I heard her go all giddy. No matter. Order the dread claws to launch towards our destination. The machine spirits agree with the order and fire out into space towards the main dark mechanicus vessel. Relay over the vox the plan. Second claw. Penetrate into the vent systems. Kill all targets on sight. Third claw find any capture any demonic items on board. Kill all targets on sight. First claw. With me. We take out the command center. Kill all targets on sight. Get affirmatives from Heartseeker and Zuel. We've come for you Dark Mechanicus. Be for Linid Merc Captain Scarlet. Arch Margos Explorator sends over a few fighters to escort our ship to the planet. Along the way watch as a space marine ship launches dread claws at the Dark Mechanicum flagship. I not pair now for the shit merc once we reach the atmosphere the fighters peel away. Just then a hellrig starts chasing us through the sky and our pilot takes evasive action. I just went ogahomine to keenap cat be ignis. Second claw. Penetrate into the vent systems. Kill all targets on sight. Third claw find any capture any demonic items on board. Kill all targets on sight. First claw. With me. We take out the command center. Kill all targets on sight I nod my head and get ready. As soon as we breach the ship and the doors open I'll let loose with Zara at full power, holding down the trigger till the screaming stops. Once I no longer hear anything we step out into the ash-filled corridor and start making our way to the bridge. I follow close behind Morvi keeping my ears open for anything. I hear something on dozens of spider legs in the room ahead of us and let Morvi know we're headed for something big and mechanical. Be Lord Morvi. We breach into the Dark Mechanicus flagship. Me, Ignis and a few others open fire upon the abominations of the Dark Mechanicus. Ignis cooks them to perfection. We soon begin moving out. A 15 brick terminator squad and a master of possession moving up through the corridors of the ship. Ignis follows close behind me as normal, using his gift of hearing to listen out for stuff I can't hear. Soon enough he informs me of a giant mechanical creature up ahead in a room we are coming upon. Order all men to combat readiness. 
My glaive grip is tight and as is my bolter grip. We reach the door and I order Macab to break to it down with his psychic might very well Lord Morvi so be it. Macab causes the door to explode and we immediately move in. The creature is a several mechanical limbed abomination. It also has four arms that are massive power claws used for heavy duty lifting. Macab use your psychic might to rip it apart. Night lords open fire with your weapons. Don't let it survive. Be Ignis. We enter the room and see a truly towering tech horror. The thing looks like someone took a Jenna Steeler Patriarch, removed all its hands and replaced them with orc power claws, stuck its torso on a bunch of mechanical legs, and just for good measure replaced its head with that of a tech priest. Can't tell if it's meant to be some kind of Margos or tech thrall but either way Lord Morvi orders McCabe to rip it apart with his psychic powers. It lets put a scream and swipes down at Morvi, I block the blow with by power saw then raise Zyra to burn it, only for it to grab her with its lower hand. This thing is tough. Be Lord Morvi. Macab begins to charge up some sort of hex fire upon the creature. The abomination begins to swipe towards me. Ignis steps in to intervene, using his sword to block. He starts burning it up but it grabs his flamer. The 13 other terminators open fire with combi bolter shots, two of which additional fire out balls of plasma into the enemy. I open fire with my combi bolter going for shots towards the head. I also stride forward with my chain glaive revved and begin to slash into the mechanical mass. Chips into the mass with razor sharp fangs. It swipes back at me with one of its claws but thankfully the terminator armor keeps me protected from the blow. Macab seems to be fully chanting now. The master of possession's hands twist and turn as his red marked gloves glow a crimson red for a brief second. Realize he is about to blow. Ignis still has his flamer trapped in the grips of the beast. Immediately change course and assist him by slashing at the gripping claw with my glaive when that doesn't work I jam my bolter in and fire at point blank range causing it to explode off slightly. Zara is released from the grasp as I slightly push Ignis down to the ground. Macab unleashes his smite onto the beast. It roars in pain as lightning crackles into it causing large chunks of metal to fall off and expose flesh underneath. This flesh in turn gets shot up by my men and myself as I turn around whilst on the ground and open fire. Manage to blow off its faceplate with help from the lightning surges. More of a sunken head I saw on a feral world once only with way more augments jammed in haphazardly. Continue firing upon it. Be Sergeant Yuri. Using both hands I drag the broken bottle downwards. The servitor spills its guts all over me like the time I even tried Fin Rouge Ale. But with more blood, before I can even catch my breath I hear raying behind me and turn to see the rust stalkers have found us and are and are sliding down the wall with their blades in it. Order everyone forward out the hole the servitor made abs we move out. We need to find a munitions factory somewhere. Look up and see a Valkyrie being chased by a Heldrake. Hope they make it alright. Still be Yuri. Our convoy makes its way down the street with the traitor Skaterii in hot pursuit not far behind. We turn down a few alleys and side streets trying to lose them only for the skin winged Taraxii to spot us. Just then I see something fly overhead. At first I think it's more dark Mechanicum Taraxii but they start fighting the ones chasing us. Then out of nowhere someone starts shooting at the rust stalkers and take them out. Taking this opportunity we start reversing and crush a few under our treads while they're distracted looking for the shooters. When the dust settles several loyalist local Skaterii emerge from their hiding places. They've apparently been lost as to what to do since their handlers were killed and have just been fighting anything spiky that came near them. Many of them are injured but they're still combat effective. I ask their alpha if she knows where we can find ammo for our tanks and she says she does. I let her ride in my tank and we reorganize into a box formation with the Skaterii in the middle. The streets are wide enough for titians. We make our way to the ammo stores. Be Ignis. Try and pull Zyra out of the grip of the orc claw. The tech beast just won't let her go. Morvi rushes in and tries cutting it with his chain glaive but that also doesn't work. He then shoots it in the hole he made causing the claw to explode and Zara is freed from my grasp. 
Panic Batna eyes Vox I watch in slow motion as she is sent flying. Morvi shoves me to the ground and the beast explodes in lightning, sending debris everywhere. My brothers keep firing at the remains but I pay it no mind. I need to find Zara. I crawl around on my hands and knees trying to find her. Zara. Zara. I call out. Morvi lifts me up by the shoulder. Ignis. You need to throw. I punch him in the face with the hand that should be holding my heavy flamer. I'll apologize later. I need to find Zara. I've had her since the crusade. I've known her longer than I've known Morvi. Zara. Zara. Where are you? Be Morvi. Ignis is panicking as a result of his flamer flying out of his and the tech abominations grasp Ignis. You need to foe. He decks me in my terminator helmet. Thankfully doesn't crack it unlike that abominant we dealt with last time. He's panicking really hard now. Desperately looking for Zara. Order Macab to keep blasting his warp energies into the creature. The two with plasma combo score critical hits on the beast and it begins to explode in a mixture of psychic energy and plasma. Macab quickly casts a psychic bubble to trap the explosion within it. The explosion dies off and now we are clear. I order 4 men to help find Ignis Flamer. The rest of us need to continue to move up to the command bridge. Ignis we are moving up ahead. I'm leaving you with 4 marines under your watch. Catch up with us later. You focus on finding Zara. He gives me a reassuring nod and I turn away beginning to move up with the 9 other terminators and Macab. Macab gives Ignis a direction of where he can send Zara's machine spirit from Zara should a good few steps south from the initial place in which it got launched. Good luck brother. Macab leaves and we continue to move up to the command center. Be Lord Morvi. We continue to move up the hallways of the flagship. Laying continuous fire on anything moving. Not much point having Macab cloak us in shadow. The senses on Dark Mechanicus ships would see right through the warp fuckery. As we inch ever closer to the command bridge, they activate the servo turrets. Auto cannon fire going right for us. Thankfully the terminator plate shrugs it off with ease allowing for counter shots. Order Macab to cast one of his durability spells. Terminator plate is good but continuous shots deployed to it by heavy weapons will eventually punch through. He obliges and we keep moving. Firing upon corrupted servitors, abominations and turrets when we see them. Eventually we arrive at the bridge. Order all night lords to ready themselves. Macar readies a spell to set off a small lightning surge to catch the bridge staff off guard I nod my head to Macar and kick the door open. He fires out the spell which connects to a panel in the bridge. It starts to spread to the other panels which causes a slight panic to the staff. I ready my lungs and tune my helmet to a certain frequency. Ave Dominus knocks. Let out a vox scream to further scramble the mechanical parts of the staff. Me and my men then open fire into the bridge to eliminate the staff. Be Ignis. Macab tells me where to find my flamer and I rush over. She's all scorched and covered in dirt, scratches, polluted oil, broken machinery and chunks of meat. Relieve a batnoises vox I lift her up and slowly start wiping off the grime and try and soothe her. While I'm whipping off the gunk a corrupted Voltrax hovers in. It spews warp lightning at the terminators Lord Morvi left with me but they dutifully protect me. Be for Linnet Mer Captain Scarlet. Our pilot does her best to evade the Hellbreak, but eventually we get hit and start to go down. Get knocked out in the crash but eventually wake up. Everyone seems to be alive. Unbuckle from my seat and fall onto the ceiling. WTF pick OIC. We're upside down. One by one my mercs get out of their seats. McFluffy is complaining again. Cyan and Violet are trying to get the door open. I decide to help out. We pry it open and step out into an abandoned warehouse full of ammo. Seems like a good place to hold out for now. Tell my girls to check the perimeter and let me know if they see anyone approaching the crash site. Be Lord Morvi. We've wiped out the command bridge of the Dark Mechanicus flagship. Turns out Vox screams plus flashing warp lighting messes up augments. Well time to loot some stuff now. I open up the Vox to get status reports from 2nd and 3rd claw. Heartseeker picks up first. Lord Morvi, these vents are stuffed with prey. 
Thank you greatly for this feast. We have spotted some vehicles in the forges. Marked for the Black Legion Affirmative Heart Seeker. Keep moving along the vents relay constant updates and mark areas of importance onto our maps. I'll be sending over a squad and mac up to claim those vehicles now Ave Dominus Nox brother Ave Dominus Nox to you as well after my call with Heartseeker finishes up I get a message from Zuel. We've encountered heavy resistance towards the core of the vessel. All possessed have been wiped out. It's only me, Carlin and the two obliterators left down here. I request aid. Whilst obliterator firepower is useful there's way too many servo turrets down here for them. Carlin also cannot get a link onto them to turn them under our control affirmative Zool. I'm on my way. I've got to regroup with Ignis anyway so we'll be there to back you up. Hold tight don't worry I have all eternity to wait demonhood and all that Zool cuts the connection. I order 5 guys and Mac up to head towards the vehicle mark bay whilst I take my 4 other guys with me. We begin moving down the corridor back towards Ignis location. Ignis and his squad are currently under attack by a dark tech abomination order my men to open fire to assist. I spot Zara safely returned in Ignis grasp. Smile a little as me and my men lay down fire support into the Voltrax. Be Sergeant Yuri. We follow the Alpha's instructions and arrive at the Ordnance Warehouse. As we get closer someone fires a warning shot in front of our convoy putting the Skateri on edge. We all halt and the Alpha grabs me, pulling me down into the Lemon Russ. I peek my head out, looking up into the warehouse windows and see some female felinids with brightly colored hair wearing leotards and green capes. I smile to myself then fully emerge from the tank. Is Scarlet in there? I call out. Be Ignis. We lay down fire on the Voltrax. Morvi and his men return from the bridge. They help us in taking down the tech abomination. Once it's dead Morvi tells me we're headed for the core of the ship to help out our brothers. Led Wayflish sculpture be Lord Morvi. We've destroyed the Voltrax through our bolters. Zara and Plasma. Time to move down to the vessel's core. It's a long way to the core so we'll encounter plenty of resistance. Order my men to keep vigilant for any more attacks from the Dark Mechanicus. This is very similar to our last vessel boarding except this has some consistency to it get a vox call from Captain Lasker. Enemy void vessels are beginning to move up to attack the morning of night both it and the Ark Mechanicus are being put under attack. Order her to get into combat and to ensure that she doesn't get the ship destroyed she confirms the order and cuts the link. Meanwhile I open fire on some corrupted Skateri I vanguard that just popped out from around a corner with corrupted automaton. B for Linnet Mer Captain Scarlet. Decide it's a good time to check our equipment and make sure it still works. My trusty long LAS is disassembled before me while I check and clean every component. Proper maintenance is good for blindness vid one of my girls comes down and tells me someone outside wants to talk to me. I climb up the ladder onto the second floor and peer out the window and smile as I see a group of battered skateri are led by a familiar Valhallen sitting out the hatch of a lemon rust tank. Well well well, if it isn't the one and only Sergeant Yuri you old bastard we meet again. Glad to see you're still kicking after all this time. What can I do for you? Is it a 23 here too? Be Sergeant Yuri. Well well well. If it isn't the one and only Sergeant Yuri you old bastard we meet again. I'm not that old. Glad to see you're still kicking after all this time. You as well Scarlet. Always a pleasure to see your ladies helping us out. What can I do for you? We could use some ordnance for our tanks. Apparently it's in the building you're currently occupying. May we come inside? Is it a 23 here too? I haven't seen him since the hive world. Hope he's okay though. Be Lord Morvi. Soon enough we've cleared the way and have reached Zuel's location. Zuel and Carlin are under heavy fire from the servo turrets and the two obliterators have been taking pot shots when ordered to buy Zuel. I see the possessed corpses. They died fighting against automatons that now lay across the floor smashed to bits all night. Lords aim for the servo turrets. Obliterators open fire upon the turrets as well Zuel helps the obliterators out by relaying the last bit more clearly to them. The obliterators roar out as they begin to let off their flesh metal guns. 
Plasma fire bursts out from their shoulders as bolt rounds fire from their fists. My terminators open fire upon the turrets to assist the obliterators. The combined mass of firepower is enough to clear the corridor of them. Suddenly alarms go off as several warp twisted sulfur hounds come charging at us. Zuel and Carlin get stuck in with their melee weapons. Carlin's Hellstalker latches to the walls of the corridor with its bladed limbs. Carlin's Impaler chain leave revs up as he begins to slash at the sulfur hound. Zuel's demonic wings spread wide as he charges to the enemy. The corn sword we acquired from the arc grips in his hand tightly as he begins to slash at them. I order my men to pick their targets carefully as I suddenly got a vox from Macab. They've successfully teleported the constructed vehicles to our ship using his psychic might and are currently following the raptors to a supposed cache of Night Lord's Gene Z that was stolen from another warband. Happy that noises Vox order him to secure it and then meet up with us at the engine room so that he may teleport himself. The Raptors, Zool and Carlin back to the ship whilst the rest of us in Terminator plate use our teleport beacons back on board. At this point our dread claws have returned to the morning of night so we should be able to get back to them upon our return and plunder more Dark Mechanicus vessels. Still be Sergeant Yuri. Scarlet lets us in and we set up camp inside. A few scatteri I move to the perimeter to guard it alongside the Fallinid mercenaries. My men in the skateri I load up the tanks with shells, alongside some of the more muscular Fulinids. A few of us have set up fires and begin boiling tanner. I offer Scarlet a cup while we discuss our next move going forward from here. Be Ignis. While journeying through the vessel I don't contribute much to the fighting. Instead I focus on repairing Zara to the best of my abilities with parts I salvage from the ship. I make extra sure they don't have eyes or tentacles and have McCabe go over them with his powers to make sure they are not tainted with the stench of chaos. By the time I get my flamer fully operational, several twisted chaos Cerberus emerge charging at us. Perfect pick I pull down the trigger and Zara lets loose her familiar flame right in the path of the mounted cavalry. Their leader charges on regardless, headless as the flame scorches coat, flesh, and augments. In his claw he clutches an arc more crackling with purple lightning. I raise my power sword ready to parry the blow as it comes straight towards me. Be me, Sergeant Yuri, sitting around a burning barrel of Promethean barrel drinking tanner. Me, the local Skateri Alpha, and Captain Scarlet all plan our strategy. Okay here's the plan hello but thanks to Scarlet I now have a better idea of what's going on in the void. It doesn't sound good, but at least there's one space marine battle barge taking care of the flagship. Our main objective is to reach the astropathic choir, send out a distress signal, and pray to the emperor someone hears it and comes. Maybe the Indomitus Crusade is nearby or something. Along the way we'll also assist the Fallinids with taking out their target. The Skateri Alpha also wants to check on her handlers. So we'll work that into the path of the map she provided. We'll get some rest for now. But as soon as we're ready we head out to do the Emperor's work. We're ready to dawn hollow still be Sergeant Yuri. Get woken up by the sound of at least three Archaeopter engines hovering above. Ropes come down from the hole the Valkyrie crashed through, down them sliding corrupted Skaterii Rangers and Vanguard, Philinids, Skaterii, and Valhallans all open fire on them as they come down. Gagogo guard all the tank crews scramble to get into their vehicles, all of which were fully loaded and fueled last night. Fool and Andra de Togo guard the Skaterii and Philinids ride on the top as we evacuate the warehouse, still firing behind us. Many tanks are driving backward and firing while we escape. Our tanks plow through the chaos Sicarian infiltrators that were going to sneak in. Once we're a safe distance away, I pull out a detonator and press it. Kaboom Vox the warehouse goes up in a blaze, destroying all the ordnance and spare fuel we couldn't carry in taking our journey. With the destruction of the warehouse there's no turning back now as we head for the first stop on our journey. Be for Linnet Merc Captain Scarlet. The sound of our Keoper engines wakes me up and I see mutated Skaterii descending into our temporary base. I grab my fully assembled and cleaned long LAS and start stacking up headshots alongside my girls and the loyalist Skaterii. 
The Chaos Kateri bodies falling onto the broken Valkyrie. Everyone moves to the Lemon Russes and we begin to take our leave of the warehouse, flattening some Sicarian infiltrators on the way out. Soon Yuri pulls out a detonator and blows the warehouse, the explosion spreading to several nearby buildings and taking out several Chaos Kateri. We let out a sigh of relief only for several corrupted Cerberus raiders to emerge and begin chasing us while firing. Yuri goes into his hatch and I duck behind the turret, bracing my long LAS on top and lining up a headshot on their alpha. Be Lord Morvi. We are taking down the sulfur hounds gradually. One gets past Zuel and Carlin and goes straight for Ignis. His Arkmore crackling Ignis goes for a parry as the Arkmore swings down at him. I turn my attention back to the task at hand as I get contacted by Macab. They've reached the gene seed but are under heavy fire from the corrupted Skateri defenders. Hear Heartseeker call for the warp talons. I hear the shriek over the vox as it seems the warp talons burst from the immaterium to render part the four. I laugh heartily as I keep firing. Eventually Zuel and Carlin thin out the ranks leaving only the leader fighting Ignis and some stragglers. Order my men to clean up whilst I go back on the comms to talk to Laska Laska report. How fares the void battle? Laska quickly responds. My lord, the morning of night has crippled two ships. The Imperials have not yet realized who we are. The Ark Mechanicus also seems to be preoccupied so they probably haven't had the time to check the chapter name in the database. Additionally we've received the vehicles Lord Macab teleported on board all right Laska that's all for now. Keep the ship safe and try to leave us some targets to raid. Don't cripple all of them I then hang up and go to assist Ignis with his duel. After all, we night lords never play fair. Be Trooper Sasha, Valhalla Nice Warriors. What is left of the regiment is taking a brief break from the shooting. No idea how the regiment still exists, if just barely. High Command keeps sending us on suicide mission after suicide mission with minimal support. I guess they are still pissed about wire. Pretty much anyone still alive at this point has near supernatural skill, reflexes, or luck we finally get a bit of a break and sent to some minor forge world for resupply, but naturally it is being invaded by some sort of corrupted Skateri army. Stray Starbrand blows the cup of Tanner right out of my hand. Here we go again Cyvox the enemy are some sort of corrupted Skateri, probably Slanashi. They wear flayed skins tattooed in lurid colors instead of robes, and their armor and weapons is plated in gold, silver, or bronze, with many embedded gems and chains. Luckily you can't see too much of their skin, but what is visible is androgynous and disturbingly mutated. Luckily they don't use their guns much and are more intent on capturing people for emperor knows what. Since they seem pretty dangerous and it takes a few shots on max power to put one down. Hit the ground as some sort of light walker piloted by a limbless gimp sprints by I would like to attribute this design to the madness of the arch enemy. But I know normal Skateri I use similar designs. Our de facto commander, Sergeant Yuri, yells at everyone to mount up and I scurry to the nearest chimera, leaving shit like covering fire to other folks. I pick the wrong one though. The back hatch on this one is broken and hangs open the chimera speeds out of the warehouse with the other vehicles and Yuri blows the hidden explosives, but not long afterwards, a wave of skateri riding weird gimp horse demon thingies appears from several side streets and gives pursuit to our armored convoy my chimera is damaged and one of the slowest. It is not long before I hear thuds as several corrupt Skateri I leap from their not horses and land on top of my chimera fuck my life eggs be Sergeant Yuri. As we make our way to our first objective with our Skateri and Felinid alleys riding atop our vehicles, the corrupt deploy their Cerberus raiders to pursue us. Our sponsor gunners and allies take out most however, I notice Sasha's chimera is falling behind with the door open, and several Cerberus leaps onto it. I order my cannon to rotate to take them out nearly knocking Scarlet off in the process. Thankfully I managed to grab her before she falls off. Be me. Mer Captain Scarlet. About to hit the alpha when suddenly the cannon rotates and knocks me off. About to fall off when Yuri's hand grabs me. 
Zero zero the cannon aims right for the chimera in the back being hounded by the Cerberes. Pretty sure Sasha isn't there. The cannon fires at the group shaking the whole tank. Before the smoke clears one of the Cerberes leaps through the cloud right at us. I step in front of Yuri and stab it in the gut. Blood, oil, and fluids I'd prefer not to contemplate coat my body. I bet a jet paid extra for the shit Merc be Ignis. The alpha is truly a formidable foe. Going into strike on only to feign and hit another place riding by and circling back. Him and his mount are in perfect sync. I head once the machine cult mentally bonds the riders to their mounts. I wouldn't be surprised to learn that melding went deeper with the dark mechanicum perhaps literally making them one mind. There are several dents in my in armor and a few servos have started to fail. I don't know how much longer I can take it on alone. Thankfully I see Morvi approaching from behind and grin to myself preparing a move to force the charred alpha into his grasp. Be Sergeant Yuri. I pull Scarlet back onto my tank and she immediately repays the debt by stating a Cerberi to death right in front of me. Sasha's Chimera is no longer being hounded by the hound so we move on. Dot. Our first stop is the Tower of some Margot Scarlet was sent here to assassinate. I drop her off and leave a few Skaterii and two Lemon Russes behind to help her. Then we move on to the Skaterii Broadcasting Relay to check on the local Alpha's handlers. Be Lord Morvi. I raise my combi bolter up and let loose a volley of fire into the Sulphur Hound Alpha it catches his attention as the rounds go right into his chest blowing it to pieces. I then get right up close and rev up the chain glaive slashing into the cell forehand itself hack off the two back legs as it tries to kick me, akin to stepping behind a horse. I then pull the chain glaive back and impale its chest as Ignis lets loose a cum of fire into the alpha roasting exposed flesh with Zara's burning love. My terminator plate absorbs the heat and I am not phased by it. Kind of a nice change considering it's cold as hell in this vessel. The corrupted sulfur hounds have been rooted meaning we are clear to enter the core my carb hops onto the vox and relays to me that the genocide has been secured from the vessel's storage and that he's order Laska's crew to immediately store it in our own genocide vault. Order him back to our position as the raptors have not marked anything else worth taking from this vessel. He confirms and begins to move to our position joined by the raptors. Warp Talons and his 5 Terminator guards I gave him. The obliterators are huffing as guns from the Sulphur Hounds begin to be absorbed into their flesh. Zool walks over to me and Ignis. Where are we attacking next after this vessel Morvi? He looms over the two of us in his demonic form. Well Zool, I think we'll regroup on board the morning of night and think about it from there. Our master of execution should be ready to get back into service after our last engagement me me. Sergeant Yuri. Our convoy moves on from the tower and we reach the Skaterii broadcasting relay. The outside is heavily guarded with corrupted Skaterii. Normally this would be the moment I would play some Sabaton. However unfortunately these new Lemon Russes don't have the speakers. Negative waves oddball regardless. We blitzkrieg through the chaos Skaterii lines and my tank bursts through the entrance. Inside we find, well, first imagine a tech priest okay. Now replace all his macadandrides with other people's limbs sewn onto him. Also give him a cloak made of stitched together skin. That's basically what we were looking at. Oh yay. And also he was standing over the twitching still living bodies of several tech priests all sewn together in one big blob of flesh and agony. He was monologuing about the strength of flesh and the weakness of steel. Yada 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 standard heretic stuff. We all open fire on his ass so that we can finish this and go home already. Be me. Mid-level administratum official on Holy Terror. In charge of tax returns for planetary governors and Segmentum Tempestus. Managed to buddy up with enough of them that they send me gifts when I file their tax their tax being about the same as my own after I've filed it. Live a pretty comfortable life on my salary plus these gifts until an inquisitor starts asking questions. Until several of my friends get executed for treason against the Emperor and Imperium until a buddy on the 800th floor says the custodes are interested in talking to me oh shit JPG start covering my ass. One of the governors who hasn't been killed rings me up. He's got some stuff he doesn't want the Inquisition to find. 
I work in the administratum. I should be able to make it disappear in endless paperwork, right? Stupid fuck probably listened to that creepy star child cult or something. Reluctantly say yes. I'll organize a way to send it off planet. He thanks me and sends me the list of stuff he need to get rid of. Look at the manifest. Bunch of historical memorabilia belonging to some chapter called the Lunar Wolves must be some space wolf offshoot. Fucking furries. There's also several phosphex weapons and a crate of cyclonic torpedoes I've just made a mistake JPG why would you need never mind. Call up a buddy at the post office and tell him to send it somewhere. Anywhere he tells me he'll send it to a suitable disposal site on a forge or odd. So we'll be properly serving the Imperium. Send him the money and hope this doesn't come back to bite me. Pray to the God Emperor for forgiveness. Be Lord Morvi Macab and his retinue have returned to our position. Well gentlemen, I believe it's time for us to deal with this vessel. The plan is to set down as much demolitions as we can and then fall back. Macab I want you to teleport yourself. Zul, Carlin, the obliterators and the raptor pack back to morning of night whilst me and the rest of the terminators will guide the vessel towards some other ships. We'll then order Lasker and her men to open fire upon the vessel and the results should cause this vessel and many others around it to explode. Thankfully we will have teleported back on board after getting the ship in position thanks to the teleport homers on board our vessel. Afterwards we get out of the Imperials way and take their Ark Mechanicus by surprise. Of course I'll have Lasker ask it some questions regarding where it last went. To determine if it's the same one from the arc incident with my speech concluded we enter into the engine room and set explosives. These were gifts from some iron warriors warb and we assisted a few years back we'll be putting them to good use. Once all explosives are set, Macab turns around and nods his head. He opens a portal and orders those who I want teleported back to go through once done he walks through and closes it behind him. Alright lads, we return to the bridge and get this vessel into position. We've taken some genocide back as well as have stolen some vehicles from the Black Legion. Our haul from this one is pretty good. Let's hope that Imperial vessel has that ultramarine cataphracti I plate that was rightfully ours to steal and with that I begin to walk back to the bridge along with my 14 Terminator companions be me, Sergeant Yuri. The flesh heretic turns out to be pretty though. I'm guessing he has some extra organs underneath his cloak or something given how many times we keep shooting him and he still manages to keep kicking. Bullet sponge gaming he's too fast for the vanquisher cannons, but the sponsons are hitting, along with the galvanic riffles and radium carbines of our allies. He seems to be melee focused, given all the arms, but whatever tank he gets close to just backs away. Eventually we wear down the flesh heretic and he falls down dead. Just for good measure the Taraxii sterilizers burn the body, along with the flesh lump of their former commanders just to be safe. With that done, we move on to the Astropath choir so we can call them back up and get off this emperor forsaken rock. I wonder how Scarlet's mission is going. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for Kumja models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and DND 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeercontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Be me, Colonel Farragut of the Imperial Post, currently on the run from the Arbites. Inquisition and I'm pretty sure the fucking custodes after that top secret delivery I made on that hive world. The Imperial Post won't accept my resignation. They keep sending me packages to deliver. The post must be delivered JPG currently transiting to some forge world for weapons disposal wonder why the Imperium is disposing of weapons but not my job to find out. Journey has gone well so far. 
haven't seen a single inquisitorial rosette or overly curious merchants about to transit over the planet. Check the manifest one last time, don't want to misplace anything. Cyclonic torpedoes, check. Several thousand phosphex devices, check. Lunar wolves memorabilia, check. Decommissioned land raiders and rhinos, check. Those idiots on Mars are refurbishing those with fancy new grav tech. Like that's gonna be economical. Demon engines. Destroyed. Check. Rubric dust. Check. Not even sure what that's supposed to be. All in all one of the safer deliveries I've transported finally get the call with Detran sighting head up to the bridge to take a look at the planet. Always enjoy this bit we warp out. Immediately comms is filled with distress calls from all over the planet. There's a spasabittle going on. The only friendly is a single Arc Mechanicus. And I'm looking at a Chaos Space Marine ship right off the port bow. Sick of dealing with this shit JPG check the manifest for what and lucky sod I'm supposed to give this to. Deliver to highest ranking Imperial officer on planet. Margo's not counted. Scream at nobody in particular for a few minutes before calming down. Glad the post fuckers welded a Nova gun on the ship and gave me a trio of knights to ensure safe delivery. Order captain to set us down. We'll kidnap the closest imperial soldier we find and get him to sign the paperwork before fucking off. The post will be delivered. B for Linnet Mer Captain Scarlet. Yuri drops us off at the tower along with a pair of tanks and a few Skateri rangers. Tell the lemon rust drivers to wait outside and blast anything heretical while I take my squad and the Skateri rangers inside. We make our way up the tower without encountering any enemies and reach the Margos's private workshop at the top. One of my girls picks the lock and we all burst in guns at the ready. Oh my holy fucking emperor heresy what he was doing to that iron kin. I know cog boys can be weird about their tech, but seriously, to do something like that. It didn't even need a face for me to tell that poor machine was crying on the inside. I have enema thin de must scream voting we fill him with more holes than we put in that heretical planetary governor from a few months ago. As ordered we torch the place and all his notes, and perverted drawings. I honestly would not be surprised if it turned out he was the one who let the dark mechanicum come here by disabling the defense just so he could play with his new toy without someone knocking on the door. For good measure we have the lemon russes fire at the tower and level it once we leave. I pull out my handheld vox unit and broadcast to our inquisition ship in orbit. Mission accomplished boss. Awaiting transfer of payment and extraction out of here. Be Sergeant Yuri. Along the way to the Astra paths. One of the tank crews I assigned to Scarlet informs me over the vox that she accomplished her objective. Findler some good news relief ask him if she wants to meet up again. But before he can respond our convoy encounters a group of venom crawlers and corrupted dune crawlers. I hang up the vox and order our convoy to advance in a chevron formation to break them up. Then take them out individually. Man I love being in the guard. Be me. Colonel Farragut of the Imperial Post. Currently barreling towards a demon infested forge world in order to deliver the post they never make it easy, do they? At least the cyclonic torpedoes should help out. Comms officer tells me they've picked up a new signal. It's an inquisitorial agent's ship. Sweating bullets JPG have they noticed us? They're asking us to identify ourselves. Fuck that. The Inquisition is still after me for that last delivery. Charge up the Nova Cannon. Aim it at the Inquisitorial ship. Let's see if this baby works. If it doesn't that Margos is going to need a new pair of arms. I don't care if they fuck off or get dead. Just as long as they're gone fire. Be for Linnet Mer Captain Scarlet. Our evac is being delayed. Apparently some idiot got the bright idea to pick a fight with the Inquisition. From what I could hear it sounded like it didn't even get through their shields. So we're stuck here while our boss quote, wipes the system clean or all but their memory. I inform him that from here on out this counts as overtime pay. He says that is fine and cuts the connection. Sigh. Guess we're not going home just yet. One of Yuri's men informs me he's fighting something a few blocks away. With nothing better to do we hop on the tanks and make our way over there. Be Lord Morvi. Me and my squad have made our way back to the bridge. 
order my men to start operating the vessel, calculating a route towards a dense area of dark mechanicus ships. Suddenly see a Nova cannon firing from an Imperial post vessel into another Imperial vessel fuck me that's some powerful stuff haven't seen a Nova cannon since the heresy change of plans at our next target of attack. I am not letting it turn its attention to the morning of night. Eventually we pull the Dark Mechanicus flagship into position making sure there's enough line of sight for our ship to blast it to pieces. Turn off the ship's void shields and order Lasko to open fire with our battle barges macro cannons into the flagship. She confirms and I can hear her ordering her men to open fire. I then teleport us out of the bridge using the teleport homer on both the morning of night and watch as the macro cannons rounds blast into the dark mechanicus flagship and begin tearing it apart. It detonates into a great fireball taking 5 other vessels with it out of the dark mechanicus fleet. I then order all men to head back towards the dread claws as our new target is the recently arrived imperial post vessel so we can disable it from firing its nova cannon again I then see a familiar sight as we walk towards the dread claws both contemptor dreadnought son and master of executions jackal raza walk towards the dread claws. Seems Sun woke up and Jackal got suited up into a set of Terminator armor I smile under my helmet and welcome them aboard we then get on board the Dreadclaws and set a course for the Imperial post vessel Lasko wishes us luck over the Vox and we fire out. The Dreadclaws machine spirits fueled with contempt for the Imperials as we begin our approach towards them. Be Colonel Farragut. We're accelerating towards the planet and the Nova Cannon has just fired a shot at the Inquisitorial ship. Except instead of a splash of explosive plasma we hit them with a single beam of light it's a fucking lance battery not a Nova Cannon. We just fired a lance battery at an Inquisitorial cruiser. I'm so fucked JPG if I live through this I am murdering that Margos. Fuck it. Not like I can make it any worse for myself. Order the crew to keep accelerating to the planet since we didn't lose any momentum from firing the Nova Cannon Tell the deck boys to open up the airlock and drop a cyclonic torpedo on a timer let's see those inquisition bastards fly through that. Pray to the emperor that one of the heretics takes an interest in them and saves my ass am I allowed to do that? Whatever. I'm no goddamn priest. Be me. Engenseer Kappa 10. Serving aboard Imperial Post Vessel. Pretty sure my boss is insane, but not my directive to care. Receive request to fire the Nova Cannon from the bridge. Put it through. One of the Lance batteries fire instead. That's weird. Oh, the buttons got mislabeled and someone mixed up the inputs. A quick prayer to the Omnitia and some reprogramming quickly fixes things Nova Cannon fixed. Thanks be to the Omnitia. Though, will MR Postman notice? Be Lord Morvi, in Dreadclaw 1 en route to the Imperial Post Vessel. The Dreadclaw's machine spirits are ready to latch onto this vessel and cause some havoc I relay over the Vox the orders. Zuel, Carlin, Sun and the two obliterators will take out the Nova Cannon and Lances to prevent them firing upon the morning of night if they decide to open fire upon it. Heartseeker and his retinue of raptors and three warp talons will crawl through vents and take out key targets such as commanding officers and tech priests me and my terminators. Along with Macab and Jackal will act as a phalanx and move through the ship claiming any sort of valuables on board using Macab's warp abilities to teleport it back on board the morning of night. Finally the dread claws connect with their targets and we breach into the vessel. With a comma for our vox be sergeant Yuri. Our plan seems to work. We break apart the herd of chaos mechanical constructs and start executing them. Only losing two tanks. However that's fine as soon after we're done. The tanks I assign to Scarlet return. Her mercenaries arrive riding atop them like the great felines of old earth. I ask her for a status update. And apparently someone is fucking around. And finding out. Whatever that means. Regardless. We move on to the Astropaths. Still be Sergeant Yuri. Getting close to the Astropath broadcasting relay. We are met with piles and piles of dead chaos Kateriae. Once we arrive we find out why. Surrounding the building are several servo guns and castellants. They must have been protecting the place automatically since the Dark Mechanicum first arrived. Makes sense to have this place be the most well defended. 
We managed to approach unharmed though, as whomever programmed them made it so they only attack hostiles. So by just not attacking we get to the front door. Inside we find several astropaths cowering behind furniture and holding bits of wood. They must have heard the fighting outside but didn't know they were actually pretty well defended since they are all blind. After a bit of back and forth where we confirm we are loyalist I ask to speak to their leader. Once they get him I slap him across the face for not sending out a distress call earlier. He says some BS about not being ordered to and I slap him again. I then give him a long and detailed message to send that is essentially a nice way of saying. The fucking dark mechanicum are here. Send back up. I don't fucking care who just fucking get here a sap. Him and his choir go to send the message. While well, me, my men, and the scuteri I fortify the defenses in the lobby and wait for help to arrive. I'm honestly fine ending it here, with the Valhallans waiting for help, unless people want to keep it going. Once again thank you to all that contributed and see you next time. Be Arch Margo's Explorator Prime. Watch as the Dark Mechanicum flagship detonates taking out a large portion of the fleet. Sire freely fegs the ship that fired at the Inquisition is now making a mad dash for the Forge world with the Inquisition and Morning Knights perusing them. My sensors inform me of several warp signatures at the system's Mandeville point. Greet my reproblems program nope surprise they are Imperial vessels. And quite a few at that. Possibly one of the Indomitus Crusade fleets. Or maybe a part of one. Inform Captain Catherine of the good news just as the morning night's boarding ships breach the enemy vessel. Be Captain Lasker going under the fake name of Captain Catherine. Several pings start popping up on the system. Suddenly the Vox comes back on from the Art Mechanicus. The Indomitus Crusade fleet have arrived to the world to clean up the Mechanicus fleet. Oh shit Lord Morvi and the rest of my masters are still on board the vessel. Quickly get on the Vox to warn him. My lord, more Imperial vessels have entered the system. I suggest we get out of here. The Dread Claws have safely returned so you need not worry about them being left behind. Please my lord let's just leave to fight another prey to curse that it works. Be Lord Morvi. Vox signal starts blaring in my helmet. Turns out it's Laska. She's screaming about more Imperial vessels in the system. I sigh under my helmet as she informs me it's the Indomitus Crusade. Oh shit cause immediately order everyone to regroup so we can teleport back to the morning of night shame we won't be getting any goodies from this post vessel. Macabre runs off ahead seeing as the rest of us are in Terminator armor. The others are also sprinting towards our location. Upon arrival Macabre immediately opens a warp portal and waits for Zool. Carlin, Zson, Heartseeker, the Raptors and the Obliterators to go through. He then goes through and closes the portal. Knowing that they are safe me and the rest of my men activate the teleport homer and arrive back on board. I then order Lasker to turn on all the power and get us the hell out of here. She confirms and soon the morning of night roars back into full power. Our fake name is basically useless at this point as we get ready to jump. Sure enough a warp portal opens and we travel through with our heritage's symbol on full display. Night lords for life motherfuckers. Also pick related just replace a few things to make it relate to the thread. Be Colonel Farragut. We're being boarded by Chaos Space Marines. The Inquisition is screaming at us over comms. Suddenly a bunch more Imperial ships arrive. It's reinforcements. Their arrival seems to make the Chaos Marines piss off in fear. But the Inquisition is still mad. Good thing that Cyclonic Torpedo is about to detonate. Quickly reply to them that we accidentally thought they were a Chaos ship. Also a Cyclonic Torpedo fell off and is about to hit them. Cackle. Off comes. As it detonates and damages their engines. Keep on heading to the planet in order to kidnap someone to sign for this delivery. The post will be delivered by Arch Margo's Explorator Prime. The Morning Knights immediately warp jump once I tell them that one of the Indomitus Crusade fleets has entered the system. Must be Dark Angel's successors or something. Al JPEG the problem is there's a reason we don't warp jump anywhere we want in a system and use Mandeville points. One of them being the gravity of celestial bodies tends to keep the warp portal open longer than is comfortable if you do it too close to a planet. Like the morning nights just did. So now there's a warp rift to deal with. 
Hopefully someone in the crusade knows how to close this thing and gets here before anything really nasty gets out. B Sergeant Yuri. Setting up sandbags and other fortifications around the Astra Path relate to bolster the servitor operated AA guns and castellans. Look up and see a ship burning up in the atmosphere. Local Skateri Alpha says it will probably land somewhere in Sector 16. No idea where that is, but it sounds far away so not our problem. Then I notice a warp tear in the sky. My guards and sacerating danger a warp rift plus us standing in the middle of a bunch of piles of dead chaos skateri equals oh fuck on cue several skateri start twitching and standing up again like marionettes. A few crawling together and start fusing. We also hear laughing and see certain heretical things out of the corner of our vision becoming more and more clear. I drop my sandbag and rush over to my lemon russ. Getting into position. Hold the line guard be me. Captain Crunch X. Or was it Ike's? Bored? Hasn't been a good fight since that time I lost half me fleet ramming a moon what even happened after that. Can't remember back to crumping grots just so I can feel something new grot comes up and starts yappering at me so bored I actually listen to him instead of crumping him captain. Captain. Where's got a distress signal? Dahumis are in a fight. A big one. Oh. Yes captain, there's humies and mech humies and evil mech humies and they need lots and lots of help. And it's a metal planet so lots of loot. Sit up in my chair crump the jit it's a fight then all ships set a course check the status of the thing the fleet has in tow cunning plan jpg wirrrb for linnet mer captain scarlet. Get call on handheld vox. It's my boss. Apparently he survived his ship crash landing and now has a new target for us. The imperial post officer that shot at him. Apparently now it's personal. Inform him for a few extra thrones we could throw in cutting off his head for him and he agrees before hanging up. Harvox I was already planning on killing that guy for extending our stay on this hellhole. We were getting paid to do it. But that'll have to wait. For now I hop onto Yuri's tank and focus on sniping reanimated Skaterii. As soon as we see that Imperial postman, he's in for a world of trouble. Be Trooper Capcom. Warp rift open in the sky and chaos Skaterii reanimating back to life. Oh come on that's cheating. Stay dead you sick as oh well best get to firing upon them. I ready my last gun and start to open fire upon the enemy. Thankfully the feline mercenaries are also still with us and opening fire on these warp fueled cunts. Speaking of the warp, I could have sworn I heard a sensual voice in my ears. Got to ignore it though just keep firing. I'll drown it in alcohol later. One of the skateri I try to stab me. In response I club him to death with my laskin. See something in the corner of my eye. I then suddenly feel a large pain in my shoulder before I'm suddenly yanked backwards from our position. Pulled right into the loving embrace of something muscular. Says it's found its mark. Oh yeah but it's the same voice as the one whispering in my ears. Look up to see a massive keeper of secrets that emerged from a newly opened portal on the planet. Comrade Yuri we've been flanked I scream out before feeling my mouth get bound by the keeper of secrets. It whispers in my ear that it has plans for me. Oh no. It then orders its minions to attack as a horde of demonettes start rushing from the portal joined by several fiends riding stop steeds of slanesh. I try to fumble my way out of the grip but I cannot. Keeper of Secrets enjoys the feeling of me struggling against her muscles and slight underboob. Emperor help me I don't want to go out this way and I don't have a melter bomb on me be me. Colonel Farragut of the Imperial Post. Currently stepping foot on a hellhole of a forge world. Almost literally. There's currently some warp storm in orbit and I have a bad feeling it won't disappear lots of seemingly dead ad mech are coming back to life and trying to kill us too just another day in the imperial post. Comms officer tells me we actually damaged the inquisition ship even more than we thought. Looks like they crash landed a few clicks away. Good riddance. I hope they're all dead. Order my troops to shoot anything that doesn't look human. What about the mechanic who I said shoot the fuckers? 
One of my men informs me there's a large group of Imperials around the astropathic relay good. Hopefully there's one officer there I can kidnap and force to sign these delivery papers the comms officer also says there's reports of a chaos demons and an honest to throne keeper of secrets in the area. Ah, that will complicate matters. Check the delivery manifest. See the decommissioned land raiders and rhinos. That will do nicely. Order everything else loaded up. Today we're LARPing as space marines. I just hope those cyclonic torpedoes don't go off. I'd hate to still be around if they did. Be Sergeant Yuri. Things are starting to get really warpy here really fast. Use Vanquisher cannon to blow apart a large blob of Skaterii that was forming. Eventually one of these things will come together and spawn something. Scarlet hops onto my tank and starts sniping. Comrade Yuri we've been flanked here Cap'n's voice behind me say. Turn and see him caught in the grasp of a demon. Order the loyalist Skatatii to fire at the keeper. Their augments allow them to fire with pinpoint accuracy avoiding Capcan. A Castellan torches the charging demonettes, along with one of our sandbag walls. Have to remember to keep an eye on Capcan later. Normally I wouldn't hesitate to kill him, but we need everyone we can right now. Hope backup arrives soon. B Trooper Capcan. Still in the grasp of the slanishy demon bitch. He orders the loyalist Kateri to open fire upon her. Thankfully I don't get hit because of their precision. Though her moaning every time she gets a little bit of damage only causes further dread I try to struggle to get myself out of her grasp but she brings up one of her arms to keep me in place. She whispers in my ear that she's known of me for a while and wants me for her own plan to struggle harder and start screaming though it's muffled by the binding around my mouth she put on after I scream to Yuri. Try to remember the first rule of survival. Look at my situation carefully. Her arm has me held tight against her whilst there's a hook in my shoulder. That's literally the only two things holding me in place. Try to bend my front half down which I somewhat managed to do. Attempt to reach my right leg however which has a hidden knife near my ankle blood it's hard to do. Eventually manage to grasp at it and pull it out. Heave heavily because my lungs borderline pressed up against her muscular arm I then grab my knife and begin to stab at her arm. I start screaming under the gag as I stab more and more. Though each stab just causes her to moan more and more. She says she especially loves it when I inflict pain on her. Oh yeah but I'm only making her turned on. She then starts strutting forward her other arms carrying weapons which she decides to turn on my comrades. I am stabbing more and more trying to break free. I don't care if it's making her horny I want out of this grasp. B Navy Breacher Medic Sarah Aka Nurse. Joined up with the Indomitus Crusade after the Hive World incident. Arrive in system apparently under attack by the Dark Mechanicum. Once we exit the warp, an Orc Freebooter fleet enters right beside us. Captain orders us aboard to deal with the green skins first before we reach the Dark Mechanicum further into the system. On some Maureen Tothabrid breaching charge hang back and wait for someone to get injured. Shoal tack along medic B for Linnet Merc Captain Scarlet. One of Yuri's men gets taken into the grasp of a keeper of secrets. It starts whispering in his hair. I line his face up in my crosshairs to take him out and put him out of his misery. Only for Yuri to order the Skaterii to open fire. The keeper starts moaning and thrusting its hips forward. Pick related it then takes out its swords and starts slicing into the Skaterii. All while the poor Van Halen struggles with agony and the demon whispers things in his ear. I line up my crosshairs on the keeper's face and fire. Be Arch Margo's Explorator Prime. The warp rift isn't closing. In fact it might actually be getting bigger. To make matters worse the Indomitus Crusade is caught up dealing with an orc warg that warped in at the same time as them at the edge of the system. So they're likely not getting here anytime soon. According to my sensors. The chaos energy has started doing weird things to the surface and demons have started appearing. I need to close this thing. Unfortunately I don't know how. HMMMMM Omnitia I mean. I could try destroying a moon. That usually solves most problems in my experience. I start scanning for a moon close enough to destroy to solve this problem. Be Captain Crunch 11th or was it VIE? Why are we've entered the system and there's a massive fight. Humies. Evil robot humies. 
and a giant storm full of spiky jets. Today is going to be a good day check the status of my brutally cunning plan turns out those boys in Octarius have got a good thing going slapping a bunch of warp drives to that moon that got cut in half from last time was pretty easy and dropping a bunch of boys on it to fight it out with the nids has been a lot of great fun they've been at it ever since now they all get to fight it out on a whole planet. A cunningly brutal plan indeed order the fleet to push the big red button when are crashing the moon into the planet warag. B Trooper Sasha, Valhalla Nice Warriors, that's right, I have been here this whole time, helping do, stuff actually I wasn't, my chiller broke down during the escape from the warehouse and the gimp horses, so then I decided to walk to the astropath relay since that is where I figured everyone would end up anyways once they assassinated what's his face and did something to the Skateri I broadcasting relay. Unfortunately the Astropath Tower is being assaulted by zombie Skateri and Demonets it looks like reality has been compromised and warp rifts are forming been there. Done that. On second thought, the last time this happened it was extremely bad and almost everyone died or got corrupted. So maybe I should take this seriously. A purplish haze fills the air and some bizzle looking demon thingy skitters by. I have heard of this. Apparently the haze disorients you with images of your innermost desire higher. Joke is on you. I am asexual you six-breasted sire. Start having intense, intimate cravings for smokes, tanner, and vodka. God emperor damn it. B trooper capcan. I'm still frantically stabbing into her arm. But it's not working she just keeps moving forward and killing the skateri along with her other slana she whores. Then Scarlet takes a shot at its face. The demon winces slightly at being shot in the face and bellows out. Oh it's on now bitch oh yeah but it's gone angry however I do feel her grip around my waist loosening in fact her arm moves away and she conjures another weapon. I look at my shoulder that has the hook inside of it. I don't care anymore I just want out of this thing's grasp. As it begins to charge into our lines I move back and forth against its muscles as I turn the knife to my left arm and begin to stab into it hoping to cut it off. The shock of the knife wound causes me to scream out but due to the muffling it's taken as a scream of fear at what she's going to do to my men. I keep going making sure to sever my arm from the shoulder. If I make this I'm going to need an augment but more than likely I'm just going to pass out from blood loss. Eventually I manage to cut the arm completely off just as I get pushed off of her abs I go flying blood gushing out of my open wound which falls to the ground. Don't even care if I die I'm just glad to finally be free. Be Sergeant Yuri. Scarlet blasts the keeper of secrets right in its smug face. Oh it's on now bitch it then charges right at me and Scarlet. Capcan manages to cut off his arm and free himself from the keeper's grasp. I grin now having a clear shot. Rotate 40 degrees, the cannon moves pointing right at the charging demon just in time for it to be point blank. Fire. A hot load is blasted right into the keeper's chest. Emperor damn it. I think Slanish's influence is starting to seep in. The bitch dies with a massive hole in her chest and Capcan is on the clutching his shoulder. Of all the places to lose an arm. A forge world is probably one of the best places. One of the medic skateri I drags him our way into the astropath relay. Probably to give him a new arm. Also see Sasha surrounded by demonets and chaos skateri in front of us. Order the skateri alpha to send some Taraxii over to her and bring her behind the gun lines. Once again pray to the emperor help arrive soon. Be trooper capcan. Land in a pile of sand from destroyed sandbags. Suddenly hear a cannon go off. Turn around to see Yuri blast the keeper of secrets at point blank range leaving a new hole in her chest. She moans out as she dies but then realizes I'm not attached to her anymore. Immediately she starts screaming as she is banished. I look at her face for a bit. Holy shit it's my ex-wife. Wait when did she become a demon of Slanesh? Oh well doesn't matter. It does explain why she kidnapped me though. I proceed to get up and stumble around clutching my now stump of a shoulder to the back line where I get dragged by a skateri to get a replacement arm. Hope that's the only thing getting replaced I don't want to become a full cyborg. Be Colonel Farragut. 
racing along in these spiffy land raiders and rhinos which I am supposed to be delivering and not necessarily driving. Damn these things are good, they're roomy too, so lots of space for the post. Might even keep one if nobody minds. Now that I've actually loaded them up, the stuff that isn't cyclonic torpedoes all seem to be space marine based. Really gotta look up who those lunar wolves are. There's several armor sets and all sorts of bits and bobs belonging to them. And all that phosphex stuff. Really don't want to touch that. Also those demon engines were dragging behind us. But I'm hoping that the ride will be bumpy enough they won't reanimate. Beginning to finally relax in a seat fit for a space marine when the land raider stops and my driver calls out. Looks like we've found a live imperial. An officer. I get out to have a look at her. Gun. Pen. And paperwork at the ready if she's not an officer we'll keep on heading to the astropathic relay. There's bound to be one over there. I just hope it's a high enough rank to count as highest ranking wouldn't want the paperwork to be incorrect now. Would we? B Trooper Capcan, currently getting an augment slapped onto my stump of a shoulder, managed to get my knife integrated into it, it's got a good bit of power behind it, could potentially use it to pick up a heavy weapon, the recoil would hurt like hell however as I'm not Sergeant Harker of the Catachan suddenly hear tank sounds, those on guard treads, look out from where I am, space marine land raiders and rhinos, have wolf heraldry on them, Oh cool space wolves turned up, see a regular guy get out from it. Oh it's the imperial postman. Briefly remember I have a cousin who worked for them. Shame he hated his job and shot it up before committing suicide. Turn myself back to the scatteri I working on my arm. Once I'm clear for service I rush back out picking up Alaskan and begin to open fire on the horde of demonettes my ex-wife was leading. Have had it whores. Capcan's back. Be Arch Margo's Explorator Prime. While scanning I pick up something. The orcs apparently strapped rockets to that moon I sliced in half a while ago. Unless there's another perfectly cut in half moon out there. Which I guess technically there would be now that I think about it. The point is. It's headed right for the Forge world. As I contemplate how to solve this new issue an idea pops into my head to take care of both this problem and the warp rift. If I can somehow position my arc just right, I may be able to bait the orcs into flying their half moon right into the warp rift and at least temporarily sealing it, hopefully at least until it fades naturally. I open a hailing frequency to the captain of the half moon and issue a challenge in order to lure them. B Trooper Sasha, Valhalla Nice Warriors, be really high on purple demon mist musk stuff, licking moisture off of wool since it tastes like tanner. Or may it is Tanner. Not sure it is getting harder to tell what is real and not real. Some random bureaucrat shows up in a space marine tank and asks me to sign off on a bunch of paperwork. I decide it is just part of the hallucination and ignore him. Then some flying gimp dude with a jetpack with wings on it scoops me up and lifts me into the air. Maybe part of the hallucination. Get dropped off behind friendly imperial lines. But everyone's head has been replaced with a flask of tanner. Or looks like a demonette. Or both great. Still hallucinating. Nearby a giant decapitated head is complaining about how she wants to drag her ex into the warp. And a Valhallan with a flask for a face gets decapitated by a demonette and sprays tanner everywhere. And Valhallan medic comes over to check me out. But it is actually a demonette. Or a tanner flask. Or a crab. Or a house cat. One of those nine. IRRB Trooper Capcan. Trooper Sasha is freaking out like crazy. She's off a rocker on something. Ignore her for now so I can focus on the enemy demonettes. My close encounter with my ex-wife has furthered my anger and zealotry. Firing off shot after shot of Lasgan fire into them. Sending the horse back to their mother. See one of the fiends riding stopper steed. I take a shot at the steed and the rider goes flying, heads towards me. I charge up my arm and punch it as soon as it comes into my melee range banish it right back to the warp. I really like my new arm. Shame I had to lose it to my ex-wife, that bitch. The postman tried to get Sasha to sign off on the packages but she ignored him I stop firing for a minute and move over to the postman. Greetings comrade postman, would you like me to sign off? 
Seeing as my comrade is off a rocker and Sergeant Yuri is busy blasting away with his tank B Colonel Farragut, the female trooper outside is giggling to herself and trying to lick the walls and rubble that can't be healthy. She ignores my attempts to communicate as if I wasn't even there instead she climbs the tank and starts wheeing and doing alright. Insanity clause triggered. Now to find another Imperial to kidnap. Get one of the boys to make sure she doesn't fall off as we head on over to the Astropath Relay. It's a bunch of Alhalans fighting demonettes. Try to get the female trooper to sign but she's still insane. A trooper with a shiny metal arm that just one punch to demon approaches me asking if I want him to sign the papers. Trooper, where is your commanding officer? I need the highest ranking officer here. Immediately. And get me more troops to help out. Someone make sure that nothing hits those cyclonic torpedoes. And someone else figure out what that rubric dust does and keep an eye on those demon engines. Be Navy breach a nurse. Our novice enter and slowly advance into the orc ship step by step, forming a wall of shields and blasting any orcs that get close servo skulls reloading their guns. It's going surprisingly well for us, but I know it won't last. As if on cue we reach a T-section leaving one flank exposed. An orc with a chain axe rushes in, only to be met with an axe jack. The two fight it out, but the orc has the advantage in sheer strength and eventually breaks the novice axe jack's weapon and slices him across the chest. A navy gunner then blasts the orc with his heavy LAS and we continue on. I treat the axe jack, giving him stims and band-aids for the wound on his chest. Be Captain Crunch 6th or was it 7th? Racing towards the Humi planet with the half moon in tow where I get a comms ping. It's a metal jit challenging me to fight his ship. Haha, <laughs> cunning Humi. But I'm not going to look closer. Hey, I know I'm. It's the jit who cut the moon in half the one with the big daka. I'm looting that daka if it's the last thing I do. All ships change course. We're taking that cogboy and his ship for a ride. What do you mean there's Humi's boarding our ships? Fight them you gits. Release the nids. Why are our RB trooper captain? Postman is mighty pissed. Once the highest commanding officer, I begin to move over to Yuri's command tank, firing off a few LAS bolts into the horde which is beginning to thin down Alad seeing as my ex-wife isn't present. I clear my vocal cord so I'm not clogged up and so Yuri can hear me. Comrade Yuri, we've got a postman from the Imperium Post Service. He wants you to sign off on some stuff. Might want to be quick he's very very angry I then turn to the postman. He'll be out shortly probably. Just hold your horses. I keep firing never letting go of the trigger apart from making readjustments to my aim anyone want to give the postal service a hand. Be trooper Sasha. Valhalla nice warriors. I seem to have mostly recovered from the effects of the slana she missed musk now I just need to stay alive. This section of the line seems to have been overrun with demonettes. I know from past experience that even common demons like demonettes can be damn close to unkillable if the warp is strong enough. Luckily this group seems to have only a weak hold on reality. A few even seem to be disappearing on their own accord. That isn't to say they aren't very dangerous though. Some of them take several LAS shots on maximum power to put down which is easier said than done when they are jumping and dodging about like gymnasts on crack. And their claws and blades can punch straight through flakweb when enough force is used not to mention just being near them sets off all sorts of conflicting emotions as they are somehow equal parts alluring and frightening. Yet again, it appears as though the enemy's desire to capture most of us alive for their own degenerate purposes is the only reason we haven't been completely overrun. Plus the fact that most of the Valhallans are too jaded and or drunk to fall for their mind games I grab a gun from a fallen comrade and start blasting away at any demonette I get a clear shot at, while discreetly backing away from any location where the demonettes seem to be making a breakthrough. Suddenly a demonette appears next to me and jams a dagger in my liver. New. I need that to drink vodka. Blackout from pain be for Linnet Mer Captain Scarlet. Yuri blasts away the Keeper of Secrets, then gets back to destroying the blobs of Skaterii that are still trying to come together and build something. I keep sniping demonettes and chaos Skaterii till I hear something. Some rhinos and land raiders arrive. 
thank the emperor, the marines have finally arrived. However instead, a man in a postman's uniform comes out and starts talking to Sasha. It couldn't be, could it? One of Yuri's men brings him closer to Yuri's tank. Mentions something about cyclonic torpedoes. My boss mentioned that's what damaged his engine. I had to be him. Girls, open fire. Be for Linid Mercenary 9 MC Fluffy. Stupid sexy demonettes being stupid and sexy. I once heard that Slanish tempts victims via the six sins. Which is not good since I am susceptible to all of them. Maybe that is why the voices in my head are being so schizo. Be lazy. Be horny. Steal shit. Go binge eat and get high and drunk. Go break catnip's perfectly beautiful nose. Go mock the humans for being slow moving inferior blobs of flesh. Make up your mind already. Go make a ham sandwich since that seems to be the least dangerous course of action. Be trooper capcan. Firing upon the slanishy sluts to thin down their ranks. We'll probably clear them out soon enough. Decide to move to one of the other zones to help out. Hope some of the others help the postman out with his problem. Suddenly our feline companions open fire on the postman. Not my place to argue or shoot at so I'll let them resolve their conflict. Even though chaos is probably bigger threat. Move over to another line. This one's almost overran. I open fire with my last gun upon the demonettes any that get too close get a metal fist right to the face. See Sasha go down to a sneaky got. Hands off my comrade whore blast the demonette in the head several times managing to avoid hitting Sasha it staggers back slightly allowing me to run up and punch it. I then fire another few bolts into it when it's on the ground and take it down. Time to go over to Sasha. Her wound is bad. She may never drink vodka again. Come on comrade we get your liver fixed maybe start to drag Sasha out of the war zone back to a medikey. Don't want any of the demonettes to kidnap her whilst she's down, as well as hope the tech boys have a way to fix livers. 